the lifelong Democrat took to his Sunday show yesterday and decided to really press Republican and Trump endorser Nancy Mace on how on earth she can support a guy who's been found liable of sexual assault, especially when, as he pointed out to Mace, she is a rape survivor. It's such an opportunity when you can use a woman's rape against her. Watch. Our next guest is South Carolina Congresswoman Nancy Mace, a Donald Trump supporter who gave candid and courageous testimony about her own experience as a rape victim weeks before launching her run for Congress in 2019. From some of us who've been raped, it can take 25 years to get up the courage and talk about being a victim of rape. How do you square your endorsement of Donald Trump with the testimony we just saw? It's a shame that you will never feel, George, and I'm not going to sit here on your show and be asked a question meant to shame me about another uh, potential rape victim. I'm not You've endorsed me. Donald Trump for president. Right. Donald Trump has been found liable for rape by a jury. It was he not a criminal the, court case, was, number one. Number two, I live with shame. And you're asking me a question about my political choices, trying to shame me as a rape victim, and I find it disgusting. I'm not trying to shame you. You are. Warren. I'm just asking And I find it offensive, and this is why women won't come forward. Women won't come forward because they're defamed by those who perpetrate rape. Today, I'm asking you a very simple question. It, and I answered Explain it. You're why, shaming no, me for I'm my not, political I'm, choices. I'm asking you a question about why you endorse someone who's been found liable for rape. Just it was not a question. criminal court. Well, and by the way, she joked about the judgment and what she was going to do with all that money. And I find that offensive. How is the question asking you about a presidential candidate who's you're been You're asking a rape victim. And you're you're, you're courageously my talked about because that. I've been raped. I think that's disgusting. No, I'm questioning your political choices because you're, you're supporting me. You're someone who's been found me. liable for rape. Exactly you're not answering you're the question. I think it's disgusting. Well, you're welcome to say that, but you also have to answer the question. If you want to defend a woman who made a mockery out of rape, then you go ahead and do that. I'm not going to do that. Well, actually, what you're doing is defending a man who's been found liable for rape. I don't understand how you can do that. The judge affirmed that it was, in fact, rape. Trump, Donald Trump was found to have committed rape. That's just a fact. That's we'll let the viewers decide about that. Uh, let's talk about January 6th. What a kind, sensitive man who clearly cares deeply about women and their sexual assault allegations. Thanks for being an ally, George. I see how concerned you are that victims might not come forward if they are publicly attacked by their rapist or his defenders. To be sure, that is a very real concern. It happens all the time, which you know, because you invented it, remember? when you created a whole command center designed to smear Bill Clinton's sexual assault and rape accusers so you could elevate him right into the presidency. The attorney representing many of Bill's accusers, and there were many, George, Juanita Broderick, Kathleen Willey, Paula Jones, Jennifer Flowers, to name just a few, said you and James Carville at Hillary Clinton's direction formed a so-called war room whose purpose was, quote, to destroy any woman that would challenge Bill Clinton. You know the war room. They made a whole movie about it. George Stephanopoulos, I'm director of communications. Bush was on the defensive. Another good night for Bill Clinton. Three debates, three wins. I guarantee you that if you do this, you'll never work in democratic politics again. Such a tough guy. This attorney points out that you don't like to talk about this particular behavior, George. Maybe that's why you skipped it in your discussion with Nancy Mace. But as you know, private detectives were hired the women say they were threatened and they were publicly shamed by you and your well-funded team. Did you worry then that this behavior might shame victims from coming forward? You admitted in your own memoir that Hillary Clinton told you about one accuser, quote, we have to destroy her story. Did you object? Did you say, that's shaming? No. In fact, you later described yourself as Bill Clinton's, quote, enabler. But sir, how could you have enabled and defended a man like this, accused by multiple women of sexual assault, rape, and harassment? Which brings us to Paula Jones. You were Clinton's attack dog when Jones came forward claiming Bill Clinton had exposed himself to her. That when he was governor of Arkansas, he summoned her through state troopers to a Little Rock, Arkansas hotel room and took out his penis, a charge Clinton denies just as Trump denies E. Jean Carroll's allegations against him. 
What do you think he wanted done with that thing, George? Just a little show and tell? Jones was poor, a graduate of secretarial school, and worked for the state. She had no power, no connections, and he was the sitting governor. She didn't go to Columbia and Oxford and become a Rhodes Scholar like you, George. She was a nothing to you. Your buddy Carvel immediately went after Ms. Jones, infamously saying, if you drag a $100 bill through a trailer park, you never know what you'll find. And you? Did you defend Paula Jones, saying, we don't shame accusers, that's wrong? No. You compared Jones to Tanya Harding as, quoting here from the New York Times, just another woman seeking cash for telling a tabloid tale. Fire up that war room, George, and destroy her. Bill Clinton would ultimately pay Paula Jones almost a million dollars to settle her civil suit against him. And you remained Team Clinton all the way. To say nothing of Juanita Broderick's rape allegation or Kathleen Willey's allegations and more. But now you, quote, don't understand how Nancy Mace can support a man found liable for sexual assault of one woman 30 years ago in a civil trial in which the burden of proof is just 51% likely. My God, how did anyone at ABC think this was a good line of inquiry for George Stephanopoulos of all people to pursue? And one need look no further than the kickoff of your interview to see... You haven't changed, George. Who told you that the thing to do with a rape survivor is to casually begin the interview with her own testimonial about her rape and then immediately attack her? Most people showing this whole exchange that happened on your show on Sunday are not showing the fact that you started the whole thing by bringing up Mace's rape when she was just 16 years old. They're making it look like Nancy Mace brought it up to deflect your question. In fact, you shoved it in her face and demanded that she explain how she could still support Trump. How dare you? She was right. You were out of line. You were offensive. Especially when the other guy, you know, your guy, Joe Biden, has been accused of rape as well, George. Trust me, I know. I interviewed his alleged victim. Maybe you missed it because ABC, where you are and were the chief political correspondent, was the only network not to acknowledge or run a single soundbite from our blockbuster interview when it hit and made international headlines. I guess Tara Reid to you didn't matter. Like Tanya Harding and Paula Jones, just another wrong side of the tracks woman, easily dismissed from you and your ivory tower, George. And you did ignore her. And then you got rewarded with an exclusive sit down with Joe Biden, whom you undoubtedly went on to vote for. How could you? Do you owe back taxes? Pandemic relief is now over. Along with hiring thousands of new agents and field officers, oh joy, the IRS has kicked off 2024 by sending over 5 million pay up letters to those who have unfiled tax returns or balances owed. Don't waive your rights and speak with them on your own. Tax Network USA, a trusted tax relief firm, has saved over $1 billion in back taxes for their clients, and they can help you secure the best deal possible. Whether you owe $10,000 or $10 million, they can help you. Whether it's business or personal taxes, even if you have the means to pay or you're on a fixed income, they can help finally resolve your tax burdens once and for all. Call 1-800-245-6000 for a private, free consultation, or just visit tnusa.com slash Megan, tnusa.com slash Megan. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.